Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Today's guests are two of the biggest UK exports when it comes to YouTube sensations. They are two extremely creative folk and business owners, and they're now parents to one-year-old Ottilie. Today's guests are Zoe Sugg and Alfie Days. Hi, Hi. guys. Because obviously YouTube is such a massive part of your life, but you are also slightly older now and you've got so much under your umbrella that has that has come from that. Yeah, it's wild. It's really wild. Like, we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary this year. What, as, a as a couple? Time, as a couple. Yeah. Also, you know, we've never done a podcast together. This is the, this is the first interview we've ever done no. together, G. Are you, are you excited, excited or are you nervous? nervous? Both. Because I, I, I feel like, like when we have couples, couples on, on it's, it's a little, a little bit like a debrief because you don't really get to sit down and kind of go, so how did you feel during my birth? Oh, is that how you felt? Like, Tom did an episode and it was really lovely to just sit down for an hour and a half and actually discuss it properly, like this whole whirlwind that we'd been through. And now you've just celebrated Ottilie's first birthday. So it's probably a yeah. good time for you to sit down and, and chat it through it all. Definitely. I'm very excited. It's going to be like a little couple's therapy yeah. session. <laughs> We're going to learn a lot about each other. <laughs> well, how are you feeling? Because obviously you're one year in now and the first birthday is always quite emotional. Yeah, I found it really emotional, but mostly in the days leading up to it, because it was one of those things where your phone likes to remind you like, oh, a year ago today you were doing this or, you know, you were just kind of getting ready to um, like have this baby and you can kind of go back to all those feelings that you were having. So I, I think I was more emotional in the days leading up to it. On her actual birthday, I was quite distracted and like I just wanted it to be the most perfect day ever. <laughs> but there was one point where we were driving in the car, it was like two days before her birthday and I was like, let's put happy birthday on so she knows the song. <laughs> And I was, I just started crying. I was like, why am I crying? We're just driving down the road, listening to happy birthday on repeat in the car. And I like that you want to build her excitement for the moment though. Build her excitement, yeah. get her used, used to the song, song so that when, when it comes, comes on, on you know, I can no, imagine I can... the clapping, the legs all going. Yeah, she still <laughs> has no idea, but maybe, she loved maybe it. next year. She loves the energy. <laughs> the energy. You, I mean, you've always been a, like your mum's always been incredibly emotional at anything and everything. And Zoe's always been like, Oh, Mom, why are you crying at this? Oh, Already, yeah. that's Zoe. That's me. Already. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, my mum, I'm sure she won't mind me saying this, but my mum was that mum watching the school plays where all my friends would sort of nudge me and go, oh, she's, <laughs> she's gone. gone. She's We're not even on the stage gone. yet. She's yeah. already gone. Yeah, like, I think she once watched a film in, in on a bus and it was like, you know, when the bus is back in the day, it was like a tiny TV at the front. Yeah. Yeah. She couldn't hear She couldn't hear it, but she still cried. Wow. <laughs> And that's, and that's where you're at you. like now. That's, that's you. Yeah. I am, I am my mum already. I mean, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad And also, I think no. with the with first, first birthday, there's so much built, built into, into that. that. You know, it is, it's a whole other phase, I think, going from a baby to a one-year-old. Like, you know, even come, I called my babies a newborn for a very long time. They were no know, longer like, newborn. Even now, I'm like, do we still call her a baby? Or is also, she now yeah, a did you just say my babies? Do you still call them your babies? <laughs> Well, I would argue that my parents would still say that I'm their babies. That I'm their babies. babies. So, you know, you know. <laughs> my 18 year old, my baby's over babies. there. <laughs> Can you imagine if I'm watching football when they're 18? My baby's over there. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's got a girl. Got a girl. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh, he's about, I think he's about seven, 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 six, seven hundred weeks old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was a great thing that I saw once where someone asked, um, how old your baby, uh, how old's your baby? Uh, and someone replied, oh, they're 24 months. <laughs> so the, they, the other person answered, so they're two. <laughs> so two. Yeah, two. Yeah. I find but, myself doing that. I said that in the office the other day. I was like, uh, yeah, no, they probably do start doing that around 14 months. And I was like. I mean, like just over a year old. Yeah. Like I'm speaking in a different different language. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about your childhoods. Did you grow up anywhere near each other, or were they really different? You know, what what where did you grow up? So not near each other. I was um, over in Wiltshire, uh, kind of near Bath, in a little village called Laycock. And um, yeah, it was just me, my dad, my brother. There's 18 months between us, so we were quite close in age, mm. which was really nice. 
and it was very much like we always say quite a little safe country bumpkin vibe like my primary school had like I mean when I was in year six there was six pupils in my primary school there was six of us so it was very small very cute um and yeah we we loved our childhood like me and Joe used to find so many things to keep us entertained um whereas I feel like I'll pass over to you you were not in country bumpkin yeah, vibes yeah I was very different <laughs> I was in Tottenham in London oh really like a, yeah like a bunch of family around so like all my family lived a couple of roads away from each other kind of thing it was me and my sister my mum and my dad but yeah a bunch of cousins and so quite so a loud busy, environment busy in London, comparison yeah, yeah. Yeah, very different. That's, That's so funny. And then did both of you, did either of you just sort of think ahead to the future and think about yourself as a mum or a dad? Was that ever in your, like, life goals? Oh, yeah, it was always yeah, in mine. Definitely. I, I was that child that wanted dolls for Christmas and, like, just playing mums and dads was my absolute favourite thing to do, like, I think from very young, I was like, I am destined to be a mum. Like when people would say, what do you want to be when you're older? I was like, a mum. I just want to be a mum. And then obviously growing up, you kind of have this, like in the back of your head, you think, oh, well, I'm like 25. I'll be married and I'll have my first kid. Um, But then obviously as you're, you know, (laughs) getting slightly older, you're like, maybe not yet. Not yet. Um, so I definitely feel like I always had it in me. Like it was always something I was very excited to do and to be. Yeah. And I was always very excited for that phase of life. Um, but yeah. What, what sort of you... mum do you think you would be? Did you think you'd be like a Mary Poppins type? Did you have visions um, of it? I think I definitely thought I would be a very what you see in books and films I think that's all I had to really go by like very nurturing very patient very (laughs) calm (laughs) very very (laughs) idyllic kind of mothering but also I suppose my my own mum it was what I had to go by and you know I thought if I could be a mum like my mum then then I'll be amazing yeah Yeah. which is so nice for your mum to hear that yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. As a parent, you, you, you constantly, constantly doubt yourself and think you're doing it wrong. So to have a grown up child kind of going, my mum did good. Look, I, I want to be a parent like she like she was. That's exactly. got to be the biggest, you know, pat on the back ever. Yeah. Have I you said that to your mum? I don't think so. She's going to so. be crying. She's definitely crying. <laughs> She's crying. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> Shall we press in pause right now, reaching for the yeah. tissues? <laughs> yeah, she will. She will. Um, Alfie, did you think about being a dad? Yeah, I always did. I think just growing up, any time I saw, like, a man with young children, and particularly young men, Mm. I've always always just aspired for that to be me like Zoe and I would go on holiday together and we'd see like I don't know a 26 year old dad with two little ones by the pool and stuff and I'm like oh, that's me and I want to be a <laughs> young me. cool dad um, <laughs> yeah I've always just visaged myself like being yeah like a young dad yeah, yeah. I mean, and I don't think I'm particularly young like I, I don't think I am at how, all how, how, how old are you I'm, about to be 29. So I was 27 when Octi was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How old were you? You hold so you two were teenagers when you met. Mm. Alfie was. So I'm three and a half years older than Alfie. <gasps> Zoe. I know. <laughs> my my <laughs> young my younger partner. I'm such a cougar. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm only six months older, but Tom's like, oh yeah, she likes the younger man. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, so we're three there's a three and a half age gap. Um, which is funny because your parents are the exact same, right? Exactly the same, yeah. Yeah. Older. yeah. So when so did you did you have those conversations when you were younger about wanting to have a family? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that was always something that like I loved those conversations. Whenever me and Afi would have like conversations about like what do you picture in the future and how many kids do you want? Like I found those conversations so exciting. Especially because it wasn't something we were gonna do straight away. You know, it was something we can like look towards and dream about and you know it was Yeah, just... I guess because there wasn't a 
not that there ever is a rush but like you're saying it wasn't that there was it was a thing that was happening soon yeah it was more like a fantasizing about the future kind of thing do you yeah. know what yeah. I mean? so it did it allowed it to be like just pure excitement yeah which was really i nice. think it's definitely changed over the years like we moved house and mm-hmm. there's like a family unit a couple of houses down that have got three children and then we'd see how they interact and they're like an amazing family we'd be like well maybe three children could work but we've never discussed three children before so like <laughs> yeah things have like adapted over also the years. moving into your home it's such a family home like you obviously i i would imagine that you couldn't help moving in and kind of going well when we do start a family this is going to be like this and this is you know you you see your family evolving in that space yeah definitely you really visualize like what your future could look like and there's not that kind of added element of stress with like any societal pressures or Mm. like your age coming into play at that point because you're kind of like well it's not something we want to do yet but it's kind Mm. of exciting that we can think about it in the future and yeah definitely made it a nicer conversation I think and something that we could both get really excited about and just bond over like it was a really nice thing to talk about basically Tom and I used to have a list of names that we used to just oh, yeah. add to all, to all the time, time. and, and we'd meet someone, someone but I just met a girl called Eden uh put that yeah. on the list <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I had a list from like the age of like 16 yeah <laughs> it's very important and then you get pregnant and you're like the names come off the list because you're like I can't I, no that's not a, the right name and then new 100%. names come on it's it's exciting I think and also I think it in in society it's become that thing that all uh, guys are meant to be a little bit funny about talking about because then they're you know they're pinned down and you know whereas actually it's really fun to have those conversations and for it to just be that nice little chat about the future like this isn't it's a nice thing yeah it yeah. really is it if is. you've got it in the right space that it is just the, the pure fun and it's not like right Alfie, i'm trying to get some answers out of you <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to be having kids do you know what i mean yeah. which we never discussed it in that kind of way but if it is just like the getting excited about the future yeah Yeah. because I suppose it would be very difficult if you were with someone who didn't want to speak about those things and you did like I can imagine that could be quite tricky because then you probably feel a little bit like oh is this something that they're thinking about or like do they just not want to discuss it because it's like too serious or I don't know but it we were very lucky that we were both kind of in that kind of same mindset I suppose where it was like excitement or I'd like see somebody I'd be like so that's just me. Look at that, Dad. That's me in the future. And so I'd be like, "He's like a year older than you, Alfie." Like, <laughs> like that's you. not you. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's not me." <laughs> so no, where, how did it go from those like nice little exchanges to each other to actually? I think this should be a thing that we actually focus on. I think it was lockdown. I was about to say the same. Yeah. I think obviously this huge thing happened and the world kind of came to a bit of a pause and Alfie and I are quite, I mean, Alfie is a Virgo. So I think his like Virgo tendencies really rub off on me. So we like things to be quite planned. You know, we, we're, we're quite good at like, everything has a place. Everything has a place. Everything has a plan. Things that we want to get to, we have to like make sure we know how to get to them. There's Things still like... an element of fun, so he's making it sound like fun. <laughs> like... There's a spreadsheet for every event. Uh, we've got lunch <laughs> at uh, 1.14 today. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, that is so funny. Although what's quite funny is I would say you're very planned, but you're not that organised. No, I just like having a plan, but then executing it's different. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's still quite spontaneous on how to get there. Okay. okay. Um, so I think when everyone was kind of forced to stop I think it allowed Alfie and I to be a bit like right well you know we don't know how long this is going to last we had planned to do quite a lot of traveling in 2021 hadn't we yeah we had a lot of trips and travel still wasn't really a thing so we were like "Hmm." oh when do we when do we see like you know ourselves wanting to kind of have children well, and I then could we have something though in that world because you know you've got travel because you know you've got work that you you're constantly going okay well maybe the year after that maybe the it's constantly for, for me it would feel like it's constantly moving further and further away whereas actually yeah. when you are forced to stop those yeah. things aren't, aren't there that and is that's exactly kind of what, what happened. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Because every year we'd sort of be like, is this is this the year? And then we'd be like, no, we want to do this, busy, this, and this. Got like... a couple of projects on that are longer time frames, and they would always not be the perfect time, which 
as if there ever is. No, I was going to say, actually, a lot of the time you feel like so many people are like, you know, you kind of know when you're ready or you don't know when you're, you're never going to be ready. And I was yeah. like, I think there was a part of me that was kind of waiting for that feeling, but then thinking, OK, but I might have the feeling but I then have to make be sure that Alfie has that feeling that he's ready. Like there is two of us here. Mm. Um, but actually, I don't think that feeling ever really happens. I think maybe when I was pregnant, we were like, okay. Well, I mean, we're, re- we're kind of ready. <laughs> no, but I, know, I think I was just waiting for this like big, overwhelming feeling of yeah. being like, now is the time. But actually, it was just us being like, okay, let's let's have this year as the year that we you know try and start a family can you remember remember that chat going into it yeah I remember because we planned what month we were going to start trying and it got to two months before and obviously this was like a little bit been a Virgo a little bit in advance we planned what month we were going to start trying okay okay and then two months before Zoe's like I think we should start now. We should try now. I got impatient. And I was like, no, 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 Zoe. Zoe. I was like, we've got a plan. She's like, no, but like, you never know how long it's going to take. I think we should just try. And we we decided not to. And we decided to stick to like trying when we were going to originally start yeah. trying. But now I think back to like, if we did switch up, we wouldn't have Otty. I know, that's We would why. have a different yeah. child. Yeah. Which blows my mind. Yeah. Now imagine if we just had a little boy. I know. Wild. Also, going back to where we were when we decided, I do remember we were we were at the pig, the hotel. Do you remember? No. Because there was a tight see, isn't I don't that remember. funny? These things. Like <laughs> Alfie's like, oh. um <laughs> oh, I don't know if I remember that. We went away, just us two. Yeah. And we were like, okay, we're gonna try on we're gonna try we didn't the... try at the pig. No, no. <laughs> we're gonna try at the end of this year. For anyone and staying at the pig all... right now, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that, that wouldn't have been in the plan, G. That, that, that would have been too rogue. Uh, and I was and we had there's a little bottle of champagne in the I do room. remember. And yeah. we toasted. Yeah, yeah. We were I like, do. okay, I've got a picture on my phone. Actually. Yeah. We did a little Aww. toast because we decided, like, okay, we'll try it at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so nice. nice. I mean, I know that we're joking about the plans, but having something like that in place to kind of go, you both know where you stand in that sort of in that setup. Mm. You're kind of like, right, this is from this point, we are going down that road. Yeah. No, can, we you remember, can, can, you, can you remember? Like doing the test, finding out, and did you at the first kind of go, no, it's not, it's not going to be this. What made yeah. you take the test? So I did that annoying thing where I, so I, <laughs> I bought those tests where you know the ones that are like you can see it like days after you've ovulated, right? right. Where you kind of see a very faint line. Yeah. yeah. So I did that nine days after I ovulated. Alfie was like, oh, okay, all right, there's probably not going to be anything on there. Took it to the window and I was like. Mm. No, there's literally so. nothing on there. Nothing so on every, there. every like four minutes, I was like, no, 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 I can't. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> Alfie, come and look at the Wait, wait. Oh, no, I can't. No, I can't. So then I'm like, okay, maybe, I think maybe I'm not pregnant. It's, it's fine. We'll talk about it. It's not happening. Yeah, it's no, it's not happening this happened. time. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next day, I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just do another one just to make sure I could just be doing it too early. And there was like, a line that you could only see at the window if you squinted. <laughs> and I mean, like, blinked and squinted at the same time. And I was like, Alfie, I'm sure there's a line. And we're like, no, maybe not. <laughs> I mean, literally, if somebody was on the other side of the window, they would be like, what is going on? We're at the window, like, oh, yeah, no, I can. I'm surprised we didn't pop yeah, it under a microscope, to be honest. <laughs> um, and then I was like, I'll just do another one tomorrow. Still okay. too early. It could still be too early. And then the next one we did, I feel like there was a faint line. Was it the- No, I feel like that was the one that was just like full blown. Because it went from like really like crazily faint, like- Could hardly (laughs) It it probably was like just the test. Like it was probably the mark where the line would go if there was a line. (laughs) And then the next day I feel like was just- bam, solid line kind of like- Yeah, and we always said we would look together because, you know, you see a lot of these videos online where people kind of surprise their other half mm-hmm. or, you know, 
you might find out before your partner and like choose a fun way to show them. But Alfie was always like, no, no, I, I want to like experience that excitement with you the first time. If, I think because we're happen, so fortunate for it to happen so quickly. Yeah. yeah. That like, it was obviously quite, we're still we're doing it together yeah. kind of thing, everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, I kind of put it on the bedside table. At this point we were like, oh, I think it's negative. Like that line's not, that wasn't a line yesterday. So we put it on the bedside table and then the timer went on my phone and I just kind of leaned over expecting it to be negative. Yeah, and yeah. I looked at, I looked at it before Alfie. And then Zoe's like, oh, I was like, Zoe. <laughs> like, grabbed, I was like, you looked at it before me. <laughs> I think I swore. I can't remember. I think I was like, oh my God. Um, and then we were both just, I think, just in a bit of shock. We are, so many people have asked me, like, what did you do when you found out? Like, what did you do that day? We went to the tip. Yeah. Well, because it's one of those things where like we're both sat there in bed and I'm like, what do we do now? What do we do now? Like, what does Zoe have to do? Like, do we have to go, do we have to tell someone? Do we call something like That's the, the doctor? Thing, no, like, no what one we, tells what you we that do? stuff. We literally so did our recycling. We 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 went to the recycling tip and and that is about as crazy as our day got. We were almost in disbelief, I think. Yeah, like a I didn't yeah, I don't I don't know what you're meant to do next. We totally weren't expecting. We were that. also in lockdown. It was oh. the Christmas where you yes. could only have people on Christmas Day. And we found out, was it like three or four days after Christmas mm-hmm. Day? Um, and then we obviously went into the January lockdown. Mm-hmm. So I think like that was a bit strange because normally we would probably have distractions or yeah. I don't know have things to do but actually all we could do was a little trip out so, so were you, were you able to tell center? people during that period or did you kind of just hibernate as a duo I was always of the like feeling of I want to tell my close people mm-hmm. immediately like yeah. I I was always quite nervous about the first trimester because I have a metaphobia, which is a phobia of sick. So to me, I always, as much as I was always so excited to be a mum and couldn't wait to like, you know, experience everything. There was, it was also kind of laced with that fear of, am I going to have awful morning sickness? Mm -hmm. Is this going to be really, really hard for me to deal with, with my fear? Um, So instantly it's like, you've got the excitement and you've got the like, very real fear that you're you could end up feeling really awful there's nothing you can do about it um so I was very like I I feel like we need to tell people I kind of want that support Mm -hmm. Um, and if anything was to happen with the pregnancy I would want the support from those people anyway Yeah. yeah um so Alfie and I were very like yeah we'll tell people straight away when we know because you know we're excited Equally, we're quite nervous. We're quite worried. We don't know what to expect. Um, so I think we told my mum. We told my mum on FaceTime. Yeah. She was on a walk and it was snowing. <laughs> Literally started snowing as we like said. Yeah. It was so crazy. Um, and my mum was always. She did. She did. She'd always make little like every now and then. Not too much because I know that you know parents being like, "Oh, when are you going to have kids?" is quite mm. like pressuring. <laughs> so my mum would always do it in like the sweetest, like excitable way. So like we'd be out shopping and she would find something really cute and be like, "Oh, so like, <laughs> like I went to the um, went to the local um, car boot, the car boot, and I've uh, I bought this little kitchen and I've just cleaned it up and I've done this. I just put it, I just put it in the attic, just just for, for when you do, just have for kids. whenever. <laughs> to her like oh I forgot to give you one of your Christmas presents like what's one thing you've always really wanted she was like I don't know what did she say she said something quite what random did she say? yeah and I was like no it's not that I can't remember what she said but um and then I held up the test and I think for a minute she thought it was a thermometer she was like, like what's that like looking in so like did it say COVID test? yeah <laughs> <laughs> but she was very excited and then I think did we go on like a socially distanced walk with your yeah, family yeah as soon as we started doing walks we went on a walk with my family and um, we were like we found a Christmas present we totally forgot to give you and we wrapped it up like <laughs> test in a box I love it and my Zoe dad's has peed on this test like, <laughs> yeah. passing, passing it around, it around. <laughs> <laughs> well your mum kept it my dad has she still got it <laughs> no she doesn't I'm, I'm pretty oh, that's sure so she my mum. it that's weird <laughs> My dad opens it and he's like, oh, I love chocolate. And then he opens the box and he's like, no, no. But like, oh, it's yeah, so that's, yeah. Nice. that's huge. Yeah. yeah. How was the pregnancy, Zoe? Did you feel sick? 
I did feel sick. I did. Although I was very lucky that in the fact that I wasn't sick. That I think good. I think I managed to enjoy pregnancy after about like 24 weeks. Um, so I was mostly just very anxious. And the only way I could explain it to somebody was, so I don't really like roller coasters. And it felt a little bit like I'd strapped myself into a roller coaster, but I didn't know what the roller coaster was going to be like I didn't know whether there was going to be like 400 loop the loops I didn't know how long it was going to last I didn't know how I would feel on it but you're strapped in now and the only time you're gonna get off is at the end yeah. Yeah. um that's kind of how I felt in that first trimester because I didn't know how my body would react to pregnancy and you do all the things like you know go through all the apps and you're in all the forums and there are things that make you feel more reassured and there are things that can really send you on a downward spiral because you start worrying or, you know, you feel a certain way and you think, oh no, like, is this how I'm going to feel now? Um, and there's also a lot of like unknown in that first month, mm -hmm. like your body is like doing a lot of hard work and you just like, I don't know, I just felt a little bit like every day was 10 days rolled into one like the time I have never experienced time going so slowly what, what? is that also because we were in lockdown so there was you yes know, you were back I had at no home. distractions I don't know whether being in lockdown was like good or bad because mm. there was no distractions we weren't going out we weren't doing anything but it did mean that because I felt so awful I could there was no pressure to be anywhere or do anything mm. you know I just basically laid in bed for a, a really long time but like the only way I could describe it to Alfie I was like I've never felt ill for such a prolonged amount of time yeah like normally if you feel really sick you know it's like it's quite a passing thing or you, you're ill for 24 hours or but this was like every day you feel awful for mm. like and for me it was 14 I maybe 15 weeks. 15 weeks every single day I remember us having conversations with you just being like I don't know what it feels like to not feel like this. Yeah. like I don't think I'm ever not gonna feel like this again and I'm like Trust me. I mean, I, oh, I was probably quite pass. dramatic. <laughs> But I think the moments that you make in pregnancy are quite dramatic. You know what I mean? The ones that yeah, your hormones, hormones are yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, and also there was just so many symptoms that I just never heard of before. So I had something called dysgeusia. I think that's how you pronounce it, where you just have this awful taste in your mouth all the time. And I'd never heard of it before. And apparently it can either be like kind of like um, the taste of like coins in your mouth or like right. a really sour taste. And I had the sour taste and it didn't matter how many times I brushed my teeth or what I ate. It was always there. And I just remember being like, oh, my God, why did no one tell me about this? This is such a strange symptom. Like, when will this go? And I actually think that was one of the last things to go like mm. that took so yeah it's always so such a relief long. though when you start googling something and the rest of the oh answer God, yeah. comes up you know the rest of the question or whatever you're typing in like i'm not alone someone has googled this before me yes yeah. just yes. that in itself is is enough sometimes yeah honestly i think my i'd like to look back at my google history because oh god i think i could publish it in a book there would be that many ridiculous things that i googled but you're right like i can't i can't, what did women do before forums and social media mm. and google when they kind of felt like i suppose they went to the doctor but I've, also, I've been at doctors every day. <laughs> but, but people lived a lot closer to each, each other. You had communities together who I imagine you would turn to mm. other women that you were seeing all the time and going, oh, so I'm, true. Fe I'm feeling this. Whereas now, actually, we take it away from those groups and we put them on forums or, you know, things like that. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. So I think, uh, yeah, so I think the first part of pregnancy, I did not love. I didn't love it. I mean, it could have been worse. You know, I was lucky in some aspects. Um, everyone's pregnancy is so different. Could have been way, way worse. But I just really struggled with that first bit. Um, then I had a little dip in my blood pressure in my second trimester, which I also had never heard of before. Mm. And when I mentioned it to my mum, she went, Oh, yeah, I had that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you mention it, I had that when I was pregnant with you. And I was like, oh, good, lovely, good to know. Thanks but you you forget I... about it, don't you? You forget about so yeah. many things. Like, there'll be things now that you, from newborn stage that you completely and utterly have, have forgotten about. But you think at the time, this is a massive thing and I'm yeah. never going to forget it. 
but even when I was in my third trimester I'd kind of forgotten some of the things from my first trimester like I do think I think your body does that on purpose yeah I think our brains are kind of wired to kind of erase some of the stuff that you've kind of been through yeah Yeah. um but yeah towards the end of my pregnancy I loved it I loved it yeah and I loved feeling her like kicking inside me. Like, in fact, when she was born, I re- I really missed my bump. And I also just didn't think I would because I would have my baby. I just thought, yeah. well, she'll be here. But I really missed like having her like kind of like in me, I suppose. Like I missed that feeling. It's a, and, very, like, it's a very unique fit. It is you like. There's nothing like it. I get a bit of wind every now and then. I'm like, oh, that reminds me of. But <laughs> Do you know what, Gia? You're going to say the same thing. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm pregnant. Oh, no, I've just got wind. <laughs> 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 but that's the sim- that's the like, that's the like closest thing I can. There's kind of wind that moves, not just that I need to trump wind. That yeah, kind yeah. Of the like bubbly, the like yeah, yes. bubbly. Yeah, it does feel very similar. Yeah, Alfie, what was it like from the outside? Because obviously for you, your body's not doing the same thing as Zoe's, mm. and she's and she's really feeling it. But in your head, you're going to be a dad, and there's this big thing going on. Um, so how was it for you? I think it was like I always tried to be as like fully involved as possible, read up on books, look at things online, watch videos online. We did a bunch of like different courses and things over Zoom. Um, But really try and understand what Zoe's feeling going through as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Because that definitely obviously it was really beneficial for Zoe hopefully yes it was. Uh, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> uh, but also like otherwise yeah it kind of doesn't feel like you're having a baby kind of thing like if I I think lockdown also helped that that it brought us so close physically together and emotionally like all the time that it really enabled like me to feel like I'm having having yeah, a kid yeah. as well kind of thing um Alfie no, was amazing. Like... You're you're not giving your like uh, yourself credit because honestly, some days I would just be like, Alfie, I can smell the fridge from up here. Like, well, shut you the, fridge. the fridge. <laughs> like, I think I just turned into like cleaner chef, like just everything that I could possibly, every that. role I could possibly do. Yeah. yeah, so that everything was as smooth for you as possible. Yeah, Alfie really embraced like whatever he could do to help. Like there was not one moment where he moaned, not one. Um, not, not I don't think I, don't think I can because I'm like <laughs> he was too scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you could appreciate what I. Yeah, of what course. I, was going like, I can't be the one that's like, oh, I've got to cook another dinner for like for Zoe that's different to what I'm eating. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's just over there growing a human. I mean, God. Do you know what I mean? Like, girl 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 the the <laughs> they're a little bit, a little bit harder than what I'm doing. <laughs> um, Did you? No, I really, I, I enjoy, I think lockdown was really beneficial for that, that yeah. it yeah. enabled us to like bring us together. Um, um, so, so you had a birth plan, but like all things, you know, when it happens, it happens. So you don't know where you're going to be or anything you know what 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 what's going to be happening with the world so can you remember when you first went into labor zoe where you were and what you're doing so our situation is slightly different because we went to her final growth scan for otty and they were a little like mm, she's on the small side you know when they do the percentile oh, yeah. readings um, and they were like, mm, you know, her was it her head percentile was uh, pretty normal. Everything was completely normal. And obviously Zoe's petite. Like you're yeah. like, what, five four? Oh, in height. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like five, you're quite small as it is. So So they always knew I was gonna have a smaller baby, but they were quite concerned by her abdomen percentile. Right. right. So we're in this scan and she's going, mm, I don't know. I don't I'm, I feel like they might want to induce you. And me and Alfie are like... And I'm like, is, is the baby okay? Like, is she okay? Well. Like, <laughs> yeah. what do you mean by this? Like, let's not speak doctor terms. Let's speak like, is she okay? Yeah. yeah. And they were like, yeah, yeah, she's fine. Didn't she say it was, it's got an actual name, but it's something to do with when your placenta 
is kind of using all its resources are going elsewhere. Basically, I think my placenta was kind of like had had enough. Right. Right. So all the resources and the nutrients and everything from my placenta was going to the brain, which meant that it wasn't plumping her up enough, mm-hmm. basically. So in the, was, in the, like, her the abdomen was still term. growing in, in percentile like it should. Just not quick but enough. But not as quick as everything else. Right. right. So then I think we had one more growth scan. I think they were like, just come yes, back in like, a couple of days. Another scan in a couple of days. And we'll see if it's gone up enough, in which case you can carry on. How many, How many weeks were you at this point? I was 38 weeks right. at this point. Or I think I was just before. Just 30, about to be Just 38 about to be 38 weeks, yeah. weeks. Went back at 38 weeks and they were like, no, not, I don't think, let's, let's, let's get her out. She'll, she'll put more weight on outside. No, what they said is, have you got your bags with you? <laughs> oh! And I was like, no we we don't have our backs with us and she was like ah i was we were doing juicy now yeah it was like i i think at this point i went into like a state of shock because alfie looked at me and i could tell he was just a bit like i don't know what she's thinking because obviously all that like we just spoke about the courses and stuff that we've been doing it's like you are in control you can choose they're advising you you can do whatever you want to do so but I'm then like, when you're in that situation where, no, where an expert like, is saying this, this is, is for, for the, the, what's best for your child, it, yeah. It, yeah. you are in a position there where you have to, it, well, it's up to you whether you want to trust that mm. advice. advice. And, and, you know, you know understandably, understandably your head goes, I will follow you because you are going to get my baby out safely. Exactly, sure. exactly. So I'm like, okay, so what happens if we if if we don't do that choice? I'm like, so so what choice? Can you can you, can you give us like... some, can you give us a minute? Can we just have a couple of minutes and just revise ourselves? I'm like, shit. Alfie, Alfie, I remember you leaned over to me and you went, is that is that all right? Like, are you okay with that? And I I can remember just being like, I don't. I don't really have any words. I like, feel like you were like, I don't have a choice kind of thing. I'm like, no, we do have a choice. <laughs> it's very, very limited. It's like 90% going to be happening. But... So we basically, she basically was like, okay, come back tomorrow. I'm going to induce you. And we were like, okay, fine. So we went home. Understandably, I didn't really get much sleep because I'm just sat there thinking of all these things. Family like, how's the well, you, you like, bags packed, packed, right? Your bags, oh, the bags were packed. Were packed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bags okay. were packed. They were ready to go. So it was just a case of us kind of like, you know, putting Nala with your parents yeah. and like tying up a few like loose ends. Because at this point, I still thought I had like two weeks to go. Yeah. And isn't it like 80% of first pregnancies go over? Mm. I feel like that's the start or something around that. Yeah. So it was, it, although to be fair, I think I'm better in situations where something is pounced on me. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think had, had our doctor said like, you know, two weeks before oh it's looking likely that this I think then I would kind of stew on it and I would worry about it and I would start googling it and yeah. I would you know try and get other people's kind of experiences of inductions and I think then I probably would have worried myself but yeah. the fact that it was literally like come back tomorrow I was like okay right this is the last like 24 hours of us kind of mm-hmm. at home you know let's just do some of the things we need to do drop Nala off with your parents like and then we kind of headed into the hospital so I never kind of went into natural labor I don't know what that feels like yeah, yeah. um so I because I had an induction so but leaving yeah. the house that last time knowing that was the last time you'd be leaving it as a twosome mm. yeah how did, how did that feel, feel? That was weird. I think I was quite excited though. Like I remember us being like, oh my God, the next time we open this front door, she's going to be with us. And that was quite exciting. And like the last night with Nala, our dog in the bed, just us. I was like, Nala, you are not ready for what's going to happen in a couple of days when we get home. (laughs) Yeah. So I think I just felt, I think I felt like a mixture of nerves, excitement, and just like, oh my God, this is it. It's actually happening. Like all of these nine months of, well, almost nine months have kind of brought us to this moment. And then we kind of shut the door and we were like, okay, bye. (laughs) (laughs) And then what happened next? So I was induced. um, They gave me like the gel. Um, so I hadn't really looked too much into induction. I kind of knew about it, but I think there was a part of me that didn't want to know too much. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, you know, we'd done kind of hypnobirthing and 
all these visions of like, you know, breathing in the pool and things like that. I'm like, okay, that's co- not quite what this is going to look like for me, but I can still use a lot of the tools and I yeah. can still try and stay quite calm. I'm quite an anxious person. So I wanted to kind of take each step as it came. And there is quite a lot of steps in, in an induction. Like it's not, you know, uh, just a one thing fits all you know it kind of depends on what your body's doing and Mm -hmm. how much of something you might need and there's a little bit more intervention which I guess some people don't really like so I was I think I went in with a very open mind which is quite unlike me I was very like okay what will be will be we just want her to be out and Mm -hmm. for her to be happy and for us to be happy um and obviously had my birth plan um which I think I had written something like uh I don't I didn't want gas and air I know that because so many people had told me it made them feel very sick or throw mm. up and obviously I have a metaphobia so I'm yeah. going into this hospital like as long as I don't throw up then like, everything will be fine <laughs> <laughs> you're like more worried about not being yeah, sick than you honestly, are about actually I'm, birthing or like, I'm not great in hospital situations um and I don't I don't I didn't like the idea of like you know a cannula and all these things I've never had before um, I'd never even done a blood test before being pregnant. Whoa. Yeah, I just hadn't needed to. And I think the longer I hadn't done it, the more I'd kind of built it up in my head. So I wasn't really nervous about the pain. I was more nervous about kind of my anxiety and like kind of medical things happening that I wasn't kind of as clued up on, I suppose. But um I feel like I really surprised myself. I was also one of these people that was like, I will happily take, I will happily take pain relief. There wasn't a part of me that ever thought like, nope, I'm going to, I'm going to try and push through it. I was always <laughs> very like, oh no, no. The, the minute I am not enjoying myself, I am I will quite happily have an epidural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think because I knew that as well, I kind of was just like, okay, I'll get to a point where I'm like, okay, this is a bit, this is, uh, this is too much for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I had an epidural, um, but I think it kind of, it went, it, we went in on the Friday and then she was born like early hours of Sunday morning. Okay. okay. Yeah. I but, think that's the thing is that when, I think when people think of induction, they think you're going to be induced and it happens so like quick as a flash, but actually it, it does still take, usually take time. Yeah, exactly. I and definitely I, thought it would be quicker. You I didn't, I didn't realise how long the yeah. process... I thought it would be like, maybe like 12 hours or like 10 hours in my head of just like, it's kind of what I had in my mind, but I didn't realise how slow it was. Yeah. It but obviously was, that's for a reason, because they don't want to ramp it up too much, and then it's intense on the baby. Yeah, and they have to monitor the baby quite closely. Um, but also I, I feel like anything I ever did read about induction was quite scary. Like there's quite a lot of more kind of negative stories around induction and I actually had a really really positive experience Mm -hmm. so like anyone who I speak to it's kind of like induction is the thing they really fear like oh as long as I'm not induced you know as long as I can just do this how I want to do it and I don't you know and I don't get into that position so it is like I do feel like because I had such a positive experience it's quite nice to be able to reassure people in a yeah. way like like you know I not at any point did I feel like I was out of control or that something was happening that I didn't really want to happen and there are definitely certain things that you can ask for so I had um like mobile um what's it called when they track the baby's like heart heart rate and the contractions like the monitoring like mm-hmm. yeah they had monitoring for you and for the baby yeah so you could still move around while you're being monitored and you know just I think as long as you kind of have your like home comforts and your you feel like you know what's happening mm-hmm. then it really does make a lot of difference um so yeah I I always say like I had a really really positive birth like I would do birth again tomorrow um don't know that I would feel the same about the first trimester, but I would definitely <laughs> do birth again. <laughs> Zoe, one thing that I found um, that uh, a quote from you that really made me chuckle was how the fuck does anyone do this with nothing? And it really Honestly, made me chuckle. I said this to Alfie when I, I so there was one point where I was in the bath. I was topping up with warm water every like the three minutes and I was having contractions and I was like, I, I looked at you and I was like, I can't, Alfie, how the fuck does anyone do this? Just, just breathing, just, just at home. I said, people do this at home. Yeah. The thought of a home birth. 
people do this at home but people just do this thing, in water isn't it? Yeah, I think but also I'm moments. kind of just like why <laughs> like, if you said Alfie have you got knee surgery next week I'll be like obviously there's going to be me- like <laughs> why would I ever not have medication but like, I guess there's mean? moments in that that really make you you see that everyone's bodies are different like we process mm. things in different ways and you know they're 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 yeah it's just different for everyone and there's no so there's no right or wrong way you've just got to find a way that that does in that moment work for you so yeah. what was your what was your recovery like mm, it wasn't great but then obviously I don't really have anything to compare it to but I found postpartum quite tricky and I know a lot of people generally find postpartum quite hard I actually did a like a poll on my Instagram and I said you know if you were to rate pregnancy birth and postpartum Mm. kind of favorite to least favorite or like worst to best how would you rate it and most people for them said postpartum was their worst which I think is such a huge I mean that's just like a whole conversation in itself because it's one of those things where there's so much you could say but then you don't want to, you know, someone, a friend who might be having a baby might say like, well, how did you find postpartum? And you you could kind of give two answers. You could yeah. give like the wholehearted, honest truth, which could absolutely terrify someone. Or you could give a kind of more like lighter version, which then kind of could send somebody off into a bit of a false kind of illusion of what postpartum is it's so hard to find that balance I, I think maybe we put too much um emphasis on the birth and we don't talk about postpartum enough whereas if we did we'd probably arm people a lot better with yeah, the tools to, to actually, to actually get, get themselves, themselves through, through it. it things like tearing and and, and recovery in that way oh. you're leaking and i think if because then you could have like a little a sack of tools that will just get you through and realise that you're not on your own in those moments. Because you just, for me, entering motherhood, I thought I was going to be the best mother ever. And then entering it, the first three weeks, I likened to hell because it was just, just you, know, you know, the, the pain, pain, the breastfeeding, the breastfeeding didn't, didn't work, um, that feeling of kind of being, feeling a bit disconnected from what was going on. Um, and I had in my head all these vision, all these ideas, all these ideals of what it was going to be. And, and it just simply wasn't that. Yeah, I kind of likened it a little bit. I mean, it's probably not the best like metaphor, but I said that pregnancy was almost like climbing one mountain. Bear in mind, I've never climbed a mountain. So this is just, (laughs) this is just going off what I imagine it would be. (laughs) Pregnancy was climbing one mountain. Yeah. And you can have support from people, but you're essentially climbing that mountain on your own. Mm -hmm. People can kind of cheer you on from the bottom and be there for you if you fall, but you kind of have to, you have to do it yourself. Then you've climbed this pregnancy mountain and then you have to have have the baby. That's a whole other mountain to climb. Mm. And again, you're kind of exhausted from the first mountain you've climbed. Like you're not going into birth your best self. Mm. You know, you're tired. You've not really had great sleep. You've probably got acid reflux. You're, you're hot. You're swollen. You, you, you're not your best self. Yeah. So you've climbed one mountain. You're climbing another then you get to the top of that mountain and now you've climbed two and you're absolutely exhausted. You've got bruises, you're hurting all over, you're pe- you've got a lot of pain. And again, people can be there for you, but mm. they're not on the mount. They're not going through exactly what you're going through. And then postpartum is like another mountain on top of that. But at this point, you're climbing this mountain after having climbed two with no rest. So you're 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 essentially getting to the top but you feel like absolute crap (laughs) and you're like I need to get there and I know I'm going to get to the top and I've got everyone around me who said who can help me but you just don't feel like yourself like you don't you're not in you're not in a good starting position for postpartum unless you have a very easy birth which I'm sure happens for a lot of people, which is great. So they can kind of enter into postpartum feeling a little less wounded, I suppose. But that's how I I kind of felt. And I was like, I feel like I'm now doing the third mountain. Yeah. But I've just climbed two. I've not had really had much of a rest. <laughs> like, no, I'm, not, I'm not coming think... into this part feeling refreshed. Like, and, and how, how the hell am I going to do it? And yeah. using your metaphor, although the people are still cheering they are way down at the base of that first mountain. So for for many parts of postpartum, it can feel like 
you are doing it alone and it yeah. is you know because you know it is happening to you and yeah definitely. It's, it's a shock though seeing how much life changes literally overnight with a with a baby you know arriving oh it really is I'll let, I'll let you speak on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I've just word vomited at you. And now you I'm word like, vom- 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 like, it's fine. I, honestly, the only thing I can liken it to, I'm, again, I'm using like really rubbish metaphors. I'm, I'm loving metaphors. Okay. <laughs> you, you fire another one. The, the only thing I can liken it to is like, before you have a baby, your life is like a puzzle that is is put together and all these different pieces, you've got friends, you've got family, you've got, you know, your hobbies, your work. It all comes together. It might be a bit of a messy puzzle already, but it, it all fits together and that's how your life is. And I feel like you have a baby and it's like someone has come along and gone, smash and your puzzle all the pieces are all still there no i think they've added in a couple of extra pieces oh yeah they've added in a so few now extra it doesn't pieces. you've got to choose which ones are getting out of there but is you feel a little <laughs> bit like your life has just gone like this just just has, the puzzle is not in it's not together anymore do you sometimes, sometimes wonder how you filled your time before you had a baby because i'm like i don't know how i uh, oh my god what, what I, did. I did what did we do I think what there's, there's probably my most common thought in my brain is like, what did I possibly, I thought I was busy. <laughs> I genuinely thought I was super busy. I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it is wild. It is wild. It's not, can you believe how much your life has changed? You know, you've almost been together 10 years, how much your lives together have, have changed within that period. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, It's wild. Like we've really been through like every phase of our like adolescent. Yeah, like growing up as adults together. Yeah. And I think luckily, um, there's also been hard work in it as well, just to credit ourselves. We've grown together, I feel yeah. like, because I feel like during that time period, so much changes that people often grow apart. Yeah. And I feel like we've really grown together. Definitely. And how has Otterley changed job. that? Good job. Well done. Good time. <laughs> how, how has, has having Otterley added to that? Well, I would say it's probably made us, oh, it's it's a hundred percent made us like so much stronger in a sense that it's like we're both almost like we're both on like this level playing field of neither of us have done this before. Mm. We're both learning every day we learn something else we're learning this together like this is it's almost like the biggest project we have ever had together (laughs) but there's no room for like oh well we can't let's just not do it today do you know what I mean like you you are faced with challenges and things you've got to kind of work out together and although we've done lots of you know work things in the past like nothing has ever been like this before and you know, it makes you bicker a lot more, I would say. <laughs> like we, well, no, just maybe not small, more, no, but just, just over the most Definitely more, but just thing. small little things. Well, well, because resentment and stuff can no build wrong. up if you're not talking, you know, you can... Oh, communication can... is key. Yeah. Really, and also just because neither of us have done this before, we might have totally different ways of doing something, um, which is fine in general life because that's what makes us who we are. But all of a sudden we have this thing together that requires us to kind of be on the same page yeah. for a lot of it. So like sometimes me and Alfie have had to sit down and be like, well, how, well, okay, well, what do you suggest then? Like, how would you yeah. deal with this? Or like in a much like more lighthearted way, last year at Christmas, I was like, oh, so when I did Christmas, you know, we had stockings, but then Father Christmas would put a present under the tree for me and Joe. And Alfie was like, well, we didn't have a present from Father Christmas. And I was he like, doesn't put presents I was like, well, we tree. need to both he be on the same page it. here. <laughs> Oh, oh right. he doesn't come to the tree. But this is this is like things like this are big because you're start like you're starting your own traditions. Sure. And yeah. you've, you've got, got a, a you've, you've got, got a meet in the middle of what you what you're gonna, you're gonna, what you're gonna exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. If I could get you to write a letter on parenthood who would it be to and what would you say Mm. I think I would write one to all of the people about to become parents and I would just say something like I don't know something 
that's kind of reassuring and that kind of reminds them that whatever they are feeling there are people that have felt that way and you won't always feel feel that way like Mm -hmm. if you're finding it hard you're having a hard day you're struggling with something there will be somebody else feeling that way and time does pass and they really do grow in front of your eyes so quickly that if you're going through a phase or you're finding something really tricky it might feel long like I remember us being like the days feel the long days but the, the so weeks long. go so quick yeah. that it's almost like I don't know it time is time is moving so fast like I think I think that's probably what I would say yeah just to reassure people mm-hmm. that might be feeling that way yeah yeah I think I'd write a letter to people. Who would it be directed to? I know what it would say, but I'm trying to think who it would be directed to. Maybe it'd just be an open letter. But about, for me, and I'm not putting, throwing my dad in the dirt here, but for me, (laughs) my my dad growing up and he was like an amazing dad really hands-on he worked incredibly hard like long hours he worked he commuted to London every day from Brighton where I lived but for me my dad was always like the hard working one in the family more so than my mum and my mum had like an amazing job she was a manager of seven people worked really long like long solid hours like norm out of full-time job as well kind of thing but because my dad was commuting to London, my mum also picked us up from school, doctor to, to school, cooked us dinners, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But in my head, my dad was always the one that was like doing the hard stint. He was commuting to London. Right. right. And now when I reflect back on it, and I haven't actually chatted to my mum about this, she's probably listening to crying. <laughs> um, now when I reflect back on it, I'm like, my mum did the hard stint sitting on a train to London commuting and doing like some big business meetings that my dad did all day that is easy compared (laughs) to doing the full-time job and all the fun activities me and my sister dropping us to all the clubs taking us to school picking us up cooking us dinners cooking my dad dinner so mine would be like an open letter to the parent that is the one that might not get as much uh, credit for doing the stint with the kids, whether that's the husband or the wife or whoever it is. Yeah. yeah. That parent is doing the stint. Even if the other one has financially a better job, whatever, that parent is doing the stint. And I haven't been able to appreciate that now. Yeah. yeah. Until having Otty. Yeah. I really love that. Okay. We have come to the final three sentences that I'd like you to complete. So Zoe, being a mum means? I did make a little note because I knew these questions were coming. Okay, so I put being a mum means feeling immense pride every day, which is something I would experience in life every now and then if I did something I felt proud of myself for or proud of somebody else. Mm. But I think when you are a parent, you feel that pride on another level, whether that's proud of yourself for getting through a hard day, proud of your partner for something that they've done, proud of Otty for, you know, hitting a milestone or, you know, saying a word that she's been trying to say, Um, like the big things or the small things. I just have never felt so much pride than I have since being a mum. That's That's cool. Alfie, being a dad means? I think becoming fully selfless, like I said, and just being aware that every decision, big or small, is for the entire family and affects the entire family. Because I think prior, I just did a lot of things that I enjoyed doing. And I think just having the awareness of just being fully selfless and just thinking of the whole family and everything I do. Yeah. Yeah. So since having a child, I. Since having a child, I 
find joy in the smallest of things. And I think it's really easy when you've got kind of a bit of tunnel vision before you have a child um, to kind of just get into the everyday things. And then since having Otty, I feel like she has kind of ignited that kind of like childlike innocence. Like she'll get so excited by a leaf. And I'm like, <laughs> I wouldn't have even set, like taken a second look at that leaf. And yeah. it's like the joy that she feels for all these things for the first time is really nice because it kind of, it brings you back mm-hmm. down, I suppose. And it kind of reminds you that like, you know, you don't have to take life too seriously. And there really is joy in the simplest of things. So I think that. Alfie, Alfie. since having a child, I? I've got my life together. I feel like I've got more, far more routine than I've ever had, which is obviously pretty forced in place because (laughs) you can't not really have too much of a routine. Um, But I feel like I just... I couldn't have benefited more from having more structure in my life. Um, yeah. It's funny. It's funny. Structure. Yeah, structure. We I remember before having our first, Tom was like, yeah, no, the baby will just sleep when we sleep. You know, it doesn't need, we don't, um, you have a baby and you're like, well, that's a load of rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. I don't We're know, always like, like, no matter what we do, no matter where we go, this baby's going to come with us and do everywhere. what we're doing. <laughs> and we're not going to abide to their, to their time schedules. And now we're like, oh, that comes at a cost though. No, I'm like, a copy of a friend. I'm like, so I've got to leave in four minutes. And they're like, really? Not five? I'm like, no, four. No, four. It's got to be four. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally, finally I'm, I'm happy when... I'm happy when we're with friends and family and they are with Ottie and you can see how much love they have for her and how much love she has for them. Like, obviously we love her and we see her every day, but to see her with the people we love and to see how much they love her, that really makes me so happy. Like there's literally nothing better than like watching your child love on your favorite people and your favorite people loving on your child yeah, that's so gorgeous Alfie I'm happy when just doing the simple everyday little things as a family I think I've always enjoyed previously doing much bigger more uh more like sporty and outgoing things whereas now i just really appreciate and i'm the happiest when i'm just going for a little walk as a family yeah. or going for like a going to my favorite coffee shop with with Otti as well yeah just being able to have those everyday little moments but those moments have been so massively improved guys, guys thank you so much for giving me your time thank today you. it's been so lovely sitting down and having a good old natter I know, I feel like we've taken up so much of your time as well. Yeah. I know, I know. I've been sat here all day, G. <laughs> I know, same. I've literally just had someone in the studio like just showing me their watch and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot. I'm not just sat down with friends. We are recording a podcast. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. And sending you all so, so, so much love. Give thank Ottilie you. a big squeeze from me. And I wish you she was will. here to say hi. Oh. I know. Yeah. She's so cute. So gorgeous. Well, thank you guys. Hopefully, get together soon. Yes, definitely. Let's do it.